Hi and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be making a pink opal Milky Way tumbler. We're going to be starting out with a prepped and painted 30 ounce skinny tumbler. I like to give my tumblers two coats of paint and I like to use Rust-Oleum 2X. When I apply my tumbler to my turner, I like to have it going counterclockwise so that it's moving towards me and I stand in this corner right here. Once your cup is dry to touch, I like to let mine sit about two hours, but once it's dry to touch, you can take your heat gun and apply some heat to it. This actually makes the epoxy a little bit smoother to apply. This also will allow you to use less epoxy and the less you use, the better. So I'm again pouring my epoxy and then I begin to start. I do not worry about bubbles at this time. Just make sure that you get it mixed really well. Once you begin applying it, just make sure that all areas are covered. I like to let my epoxy sit for just a couple minutes so that it spreads out and gets even. Now we will start by applying our glitter. Our first glitter is from Diamond Lux Glitters. And I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but it's Cullen. It's kind of a mixed glitter. It has diamond shapes and it. it's very pretty. It's very unique. And I will have all these glitters listed below. I like to start my glitter in one corner and work around the cup to get to the top. And I stop it right before I see the bottom where I started it. And I will just continue around and apply all the glitters in this pattern. Each color of glitter that I apply, I will actually apply two coats of it. So once it goes around and comes back to me, I'll go ahead and apply that second coat right on top of it. The next color that we'll use is Lolly by Vixen Glitter. And this is an opal and a pale pink chunky. When we go to apply this one, we'll start in that same corner and we will line it right up next to that first glitter and make sure that they're touching and overlapping just a bit. Sometimes with that chunky glitter, I will just apply one coat instead of going back over it with that second coat of it. It tends to lay a little bit better with just the one coat, but it really depends on your glitter. The next glitter we'll be using is Fallen by Feather Bear. This is an opal. It's almost like shards. It reminds me a lot of cellophane. This one is a really lightweight glitter. And you could almost get away with just doing one layer of this also, just because it adheres so well. But of course, I always feel the need to apply more. The next glitter is from It's Pretty Personal. It's Purple Platinum XL. It's an opal with a purple shift and it almost gives off a silver color also. The next glitter is also from It's Pretty Personal. It's called Pink Drink and it is a fine pink. Now I'll take all that glitter on my parchment paper and gather it up kind of into a pile. And that way I'll be able to just dip the bottom of my cup into it to make sure that I get full coverage. Be sure to look at the bottom of it and make sure that it actually covered everything well. Now I'm going to place that same parchment paper back and remove my tumbler from my turner. 
I'll then lay my tumbler down on that parchment paper and kind of roll it back and forth and cover it up. I do this to help get my chunky glitter to lay flatter so that the epoxy lays better. I do this step immediately after I apply the glitter. Next, I take my gloved hand and I go around the bottom and the top and just pat it down and make sure that it's laid flat. If I have any areas of chunky that look like they're still standing up, I'll also pat those down. The epoxy you use will determine how long it takes for this layer to dry. If I use a fast set, it usually takes me about an hour or two for this to dry. You'll know that it's dry when you can touch it and that it's no longer sticky. When I use a regular epoxy, it usually takes me two to four hours for it to dry. After your glitter is dry to touch, we'll go ahead and seal it with Rust-Oleum 2X Clear Gloss. I do this outside, I do not do it inside, but just for demonstration purposes, this is how I apply it. I let this sit for 30 minutes and once again you'll know that it's dry when you can touch it and it's no longer sticky. Once that's dry you're ready to apply your first layer of epoxy. For this one I'm mixing 30 milliliters of epoxy. Be sure to stir it way slower than I am in this video. That will help prevent micro bubbles. So once this is dry you can go ahead and get ready to apply your second coat of epoxy. You can do this one or two ways. You can either wait till it completely dries or you can go ahead and do a flood coat on it at about two hours in if you're using regular epoxy and one hour if you're using fast set. For this second layer, I usually apply between 20 and 25 milliliters of epoxy. For this next step, you wanna make sure that your tumbler is completely dry. And what I do is I fill around and find any bumps and I take my hot knife and I actually just cut those off and I'll post a link to the hot knife below also. Then I take my medium sandpaper and I sand it down really well all around the cup. Make sure to pay special attention to the bottom and also the rim of the cup. At this point, I also set my cup down on a flat surface just to make sure that my cup is not wobbly. Next, I mix up anywhere between 30 milliliters of epoxy and 60 milliliters of epoxy. I also have my medicine cups ready to go ahead and apply my micas and my dyes. The first one we'll mix up is a Limolite White Resin Dye, and all it takes is just a little drop. Obviously, I use this one a lot because it is about empty and I'm having a hard time to get it out. But once you get it out, you just need a drop. And here you can see just how much I have in the cup. It's not very much at all. The next ones we're using are from Woody's Goodies. This one is Santa's Beard and it is a white eco glitter that kind of throws a silver shift and is super shimmery. And we'll just grab a scoop of that. The scoop that I have is from Counterculture DIY and it's the perfect amount to take out, but it's just one scoop. It pretty much just covers the bottom of the cup so you can't see it. You don't want too much or too little. This next one, I forgot to show you all the label, but it's also from Woody's Goodies, and it's Frosty Pearl, and it is a white mica that gives off a pearl look. This next one is also from Woody's Goodies. It's a pale pink, and it's called Frenchie. And once again with this one, we'll just take a scoop of it and put it in the medicine cup. I know a lot of people have little spoons that they use, like teeny tiny little spoons. I like a lot of mica in mine. I like mine really thick so that it doesn't move very much. If you're using pigments instead of micas, you won't have to use this much. A lot of times the pigments seem to be a little more saturated in color than the micas do. But just remember when you're doing this and you're using less, to also use less epoxy because the key is that you want your epoxy really thick so that it doesn't move on this Milky Way. For these, I'm applying anywhere between five and 10 milliliters of epoxy. You will have some left over, so have some molds nearby that you can use the extra epoxy and don't have to waste them. Be sure to mix these well, but be real careful when you're mixing the mica. They tend to want to jump out of the cup if you stir too fast. As you can see here, I like mine about the consistency of honey, maybe a touch thinner 
but you definitely want them thicker. The next step is to apply a very thin layer of epoxy to the tumbler. I like to apply about 15 milliliters to this one. Next we're going to apply the white alumilite dye mixed in resin. And I like to apply this where my glitters connect. And I pick random spots and lay about 2 inches. I kind of just lay it across the top. And what I do is I take that popsicle stick and just dip it in there, let some run off, and then drag it across the top of it. Be sure when you're doing this that you're not applying too much. It's way easier to add more to it than it is to take it away. Next I use that same technique and apply the frosty pearl. Sometimes I'll go over that white where I just applied it, but I also apply it in spots that there's no white yet. And then I'll just continue on and do the same thing with the Santa's beard. I like to do the eco glitters last because that shine tends to pick up more, especially when you're adding it on top of a different color. Just helps it to stand out a little bit more. I also do this if I have a color that I want to be seen more, like this pink. I want it to be seen a little bit more than the other colors, so I do it towards the end. So that if I am layering it, it's on that top layer. Once you get it all applied, kind of step back and look at it and see if there's any spots that you need to add more to. You just want to make sure that both sides are covered and you have some pink on each side and some white on each side. As you can see though, it's thick enough that it's not moving. Most of it is pretty much staying in place. The way that I like to do my Milky Ways is more of a controlled Milky Way, so I like to determine where the Milky Way layer goes. So I take my gloved hand and I just run my finger through where I just apply that. And it's okay that the colors mix, that's what's gonna pull it all together. If you'll notice, I'm also moving my finger in the same direction that we applied that glitter, just so that it all goes in the same direction. And I'll make sure that I've run my finger through each line that I applied. If I see a spot that looks like it needs something, I'll take that finger and I'll put it in that spot and add just a little bit of color. You just don't want a whole lot over your glitters. That way they tend to stand out more. If you see an area where you've applied too much, you can actually take one of your fingers that you haven't touched the mica with yet and run it across it and that will also remove some of it. Just apply a little more pressure to it to help take it off. Be sure after you've applied the mica to look and make sure that none has run over on the bottom. If it has, be sure to take that off because it can leave you a cup that sits on level. After I've done that, I like to take my pink and my eco glitters and kind of run those back across top. I usually won't touch these. They kind of just give an extra pop and a little bit extra dimension to it. Next, I let it spin just a minute and I kind of look as it goes around if there's any areas that I don't really like that I feel like need to be spread out more, but I don't want to mix the colors anymore. I can take a popsicle stick and just run it through there and kind of give it that feathery look.
and this is the final product. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for watching.